Hello friends and welcome to CEC live lectures. Dear friends, today in zoology we will discuss the topic of overview of vaccines. In this topic, in this session we will be discussing the timeline of the history of diseases and vaccines, also how the vaccines works. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subjects by Dr. Amit Bhattacharya. Dr. Bhattacharya is, associ- is assistant professor, Department of Zoology in University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome Sir. Thank you very much ma'am. Dear students, in this part of the lecture, I will be talking about what exactly vaccines are. So I will start with the overview what vaccines are, then subsequently we will go into the different uh, timelines and how exactly the different diseases came into the picture and the vaccines for those diseases got discovered and created. And then I will talk about how these vaccines when they are inoculated or injected into the body, how exactly they function or works. Now before going into what exactly the vaccines are, we should define what vaccines are. So vaccines are basically the biological preparation which has been prepared from any inactivated or heat killed uh, form of the pathogen or the antigen which is injected or inoculated into the body. Subsequently by this inoculation what happens is the person develops a immune response. Now what happens is these inactivated or the attenuated form of these um, the uh, pathogens or the proteins they elicit a immune response which uh, counter attacks the uh, the infection or any kind of disease which is caused in the body so if we see the definition of the vaccines by the who so the vaccines are basically the biological preparations that improves the immunity to a particular diseases a vaccine typically contains a agent that resembles the disease causing microorganisms and is often uh, made from the weakened or killed form of the microbe it can be a toxin or a surface protein. Now when these agents are injected into the body, the body's immune response recognizes them as a foreign particle and they develop a immune system response against these particular microbes. Now it is also remembered by this immune system which is many a times referred as the immunological memory system. Now. Uh, if we see the reports from the WHO UNICEF, the vaccines have prevent, uh, prevents about 2.5 million child deaths every year. The available vaccines can prevent an addition of about 2 million deaths a year among child under the age group of 5. Now over 100 million children are immunized every year before their first birthday. Around 24 million children under 1 year old age almost 20 percent of the children born every year are not being reached with the vaccine so that's one of the disadvantages we have to improve upon how we can reach the children of different ages with these vaccines which are available now let's come into the history of the diseases and how exactly the vaccines for these diseases got developed so one of the first report uh, for the uh, the disease was for the smallpox. So uh, the early Chinese inoculation was given for the smallpox treatment in which a son of a Chinese statesman was said to have inoculated against smallpox. So this is something which came up in the thousand <coughs> D. Now the next one which came up was in the year uh, 1545 in which the small uh, pox endemic was prevalent in India. So it has been said that during that year about 8000 children died in Goa because of the smallpox endemic. Now subsequently <coughs> the smallpox got affected in the North America also so we can see the picture over here which is from the year 1625. Now the colonial epidemic also uh, uh, increased upon a smallpox endemic hit the Massachusetts affecting the settlers and the Native American. Among the casualties were about 20 settlers from the Mayflower including the, their only physician. Now in the year 1657 the measles appeared in Boston town. So uh, one of the doctors wrote in his diary that the disease of measles went through the town but unfortunately they, there were very few deaths. So subsequently the different diseases came into the picture. Then 
uh, in the 1676, uh, the measles documentation was reported by English doctor Thomas Sandham. So he was the first one to report that one. Although the Persian physician Rezes was the first to attempt to distinguish between the smallpox from the measles. Sandham was the first to do, do so successfully and it was in details. He also recorded the details about these measles infections and distinguished the disease from the other fever diseases. Now, in the year 1684, uh, which is in the uh, early 17th century, smallpox treatment came into the picture. One of the English uh, doctors, Thomas Hayden, uh, observed that the rich seemed to have been a higher mortality rate than the smallpox, uh, than the poor. So, that is how the smallpox treatment came into the picture. Now, in the year 1770, one of the breakthrough came up was the protection uh, f by the cowpox infection for the smallpox. So, it was done by an English doctor. His name was Dr. Edward Jenner. So, he learned that the milkmaid uh, lady who was coming to his place, she was protected from smallpox because she had caught cowpox from cows. So, cowpox is basically an uncommon illness in the cattle usually mild that can be spread from a cow to humans via source of the cow. During an infection, the, uh, the daily workers may have pistols on their hands. Sufferers can spread the infection to the other part of the body. So cowpox is a very mild kind of disease which happens to the person. Now, subsequently it was found that the cowpox virus belonged to the uh, family of the virus which is called as the orthopox. So, orthopox family viruses also include the monkeypox virus, virola virus which causes the smallpox infection. Now, subsequently they came to know uh, that uh, the cowpox virus inoculation is protecting the lady from the smallpox infection. So, what the Jenner did is he Jenner inoculated a in the eight year old boy James Phillips with the matter from a cowpox sore on the hand which was present on the hand of the milkmaid. Now Jenner, uh, the Phillips boy who received those cowpox inoculations suffered from a local reaction and felt poorly for several days but subsequently he recovered fully. Now subsequently they said that the uh, the uh, the boy who was inoculated with those um, those pistols of the cowpox, he developed a resistance or an immune response cells for the uh, smallpox viruses. So Jenner next demonstrated that the cowpox matter transferred in the human chain from one person to the other person provided protection from the smallpox. So that is how the first breakthrough for the development of the vaccine studies came into the picture. So we can see a picture over here where Jenner is inoculating the 8 year old boy James Phillips with the, you know, with the, uh, the source of the cowpox viruses. So that is how the cowpox viruses which uh, was given or injected into the boy gave him the protection for the subsequent infection from the smallpox viruses. Now one of the first developed vaccine which came into the picture was in the year 1879. It was developed by Dr. Louis Pasteur. So Louis Pasteur produced the first laboratory developed vaccine and this vaccine was for chicken cholera. Now, um, this pasture attenuated or weakened these bacteria for use. <coughs> Sorry. Um, he happened to upon, upon uh, the method of attenuation by accident in his lab. He was studying a foul cholera by injecting the chickens with the live bacteria and recording the fatal progression of this illness. He subsequently instructed his assistant to inject the chicken with the uh, with a fresh culture of the bacteria before a holiday. But the assistant however forgot to inoculate the thing. When the assistant returned a month later, he carried out the pasture's uh, fish and he inoculated these chickens with those particular uh, bacteria. But what happened is over the period of time as these bacteria were kept uh, on exposure of the oxygen, they got uh, inactivated or attenuated into a 
less virulent form and when they were injected into the chicken they didn't got ill but they subsequently developed a secondary response for the subsequent infection so pasteur eventually reasoned that the factor that made the bacteria less deadly was exposure to the oxygen now the rabies vaccine also came into the picture in the year 1885 so pasteur successfully prevented rabies in a 9 year old boy his name was joseph mischer by pre exposure vaccine so mischer's mother brought the boy which who was severely bitten by a rabid dog so pasteur in hopes of preventing the disease what he did is he Uh, po- post exposed vaccines were given or injected to that particular boy and the boy got uh, uh, well from that particular vaccine so the rabies vaccine also came into the picture now another breakthrough which came up was in the year 1885 where pasteur felt that uh, certain that the boy would die of the rabies infection if he did nothing so what he began is he began the course of 13 injection on each day of the vaccine made from the rabbit nervous system tissues so each of the vaccines uh, successive injections containing a less attenuated virus was injected mr never developed the rabies and the incidence was regarded as a success later in the life mr worked as a caretaker in the pasteur's lab in the institute pasteur in paris now in the year 1944 the vaccines for the japanese encephalitis also got developed so it uh, uh, the japanese del encephalitis vaccines was developed by the morris hellman so he helped to develop a japanese encephalitis vaccine to protect the american troops which were uh, fighting the war in the world war 2 pacific uh, in the pacific area now hillman vaccines were ne- never widely t- tested it was given to the thousands of us soldiers in the war time and likely to prevent the disease in many of them now subsequently the attenuated measles vaccines got developed again this was developed by the morris hillman and his colleagues so they developed a attenuated measles vaccine now in the year 1960s the polio vaccines and the simian vaccines also get developed and subsequently we'll discuss about these particular vaccines how exactly they were developed in the later phases now in the year 1969 the rubella vaccines was licensed and developed it was uh, developed by the uh, name called as mariovax it was hellman's hpv 77 rubella vaccines which was licensed later on in the year 1969 and this vaccine was de- developed from some of the strains of the rubella viruses now in the year 1976 the swine flu vaccines was again developed it was developed by morris hellman and the other scientists in the usa and they uh, they developed this vaccines to stop the outbreak of swine influenza at the various places of the united states of america now if we see this graph uh, over here this graph shows how exactly the vaccine development has taken place over the year so initially in the 17th century the one of the first vaccines which was developed was for the smallpox vaccines and over the period of time the vaccines development has increased tremendously so we can see initially there was a lag phase and subsequently there was a Uh, exponential phase in which the vaccines have been developed so nowadays there are lots of vaccines which are coming up in the market which are from the various strains of the various diseases now three of the people who are uh, said to be the pioneer of vaccine development is the first one is the edward jenner he was remembered as the pioneer of the smallpox vaccination and is many a times referred as the father of immunology dr louis pasteur he was Uh, renowned for his discovery of principle of vaccination microbial fermentation and the famous pasteurization process dr morris hellman he is remembered as the father of modern vaccinology because he is said to develop about 50 different types of vaccine in his lifetime so these three people are the pioneers of the vaccine development uh, who have contributed largely to the va- vaccinology pathway now there has been a lot of uh, unparalleled growth which has taken place in the vaccine development in the first uh, decade of the 21st century has been the most productive 
history of the vaccine development. Uh, there are lots of vaccines, about 120 vaccines are in the pipelines which are under the development process and the vaccines for most of the uh, incurable diseases such as the HIV, tuberculosis, malaria are also in the pipeline and we are hopeful that over the next century or the next years the vaccines will come up in the market because many of them are showing promising result in their field trials. Now, if we come into how compare the graph between the drug development and the vaccine development, we can see over the years there have been about 145 different vaccines which have been developed, which is far ahead of the antibiotics or the antibacterial drugs which have been discovered, which resembles about 88 uh, uh, antibacterial drugs, 20 antifungals have been discovered 20 infirmitives, 6 antimalarial, 6 parasitic drugs and 96 antiviral drugs. So we can see the vaccine development is increasing tremendously over the past few years. Now let's come into how exactly these vaccines functions in our body. So we have to discuss about the overview of the immune system cells before we go into how exactly these vaccines function. So the immune system cells are made up of mainly the three types of cells. The first one are called as the B cells or which develops in the bone marrow uh, places. Then are the T cells which are uh, into two types T helper cells and the T cytotoxic cells. So these three cells forms the main uh, fundamental feature of the immune response mechanisms in our body. Now, the immune response mechanisms uh, identify the various uh, various types of organisms or the pathogens as foreign, which includes the bacteria, fungi, parasites, viruses, and any kind of foreign particles. So, all these are regarded as the foreign particles. Well, in the, if we see the picture at the bottom, this shows the three main types of the cells which functions in the immune system of our body. Now, how exactly these immune system cell function? So, as soon as the antigens comes or infects our body, they are ingested or digested by the cell and after digestion, they are, uh, proce they are uh, processed and presented with the help of the MHC cells. MHC are basically the major histocompatibility complexes. So there are two major types of MHC which is called as the MHC1 and MHC2. Now the MHC2 uh, 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 the complexes they help to present the antigens to the T helper cells. So as soon as the T helper cells recognize the antigen which is attached to the MHC cell they get activated and by the activation what happens is they start secreting the cytokines. Now these cytokines go and activate the other B cells or humoral response or the cytotoxic T cell. Now the class 1 MHC activates the cytotoxic T cells and as soon as they are activated with the help of the presence of cytokines they are called as the cytotoxic T lymphocyte. So subsequently they go into the immune response and clears out all the foreign particles which are present in the circulation. Now the cytokines which are produced by the T helper cells go and activate the B cells which which recognizes the antigens. As soon as the, uh, the activation of the B cells takes place, what happens is there are surface antibodies which are present against these antigens. These are released into the blood circulation or into the immune uh, clearance channels and they clear the antigens from our blood circulation. So this is how our immune system cells functions in our body. Now, how exactly the, um, the macrophages clears the foreign particles or the pathogens from our body. So we can see electron micrograph which is showing a pathogen attacking a Escherichia coli. So what happens is the bacterium uh, becomes attached to the membrane, uh, membrane evagination which is called as a pseudopodia. The bacteria is subsequently ingested forming the phagosome. The phagosome fuses with the lysosomes. These lysosomes contains contains the lytic uh, enzymes at an acidic pH. So these lysosomal enzymes digest the captured material and subsequently the digested products are released from the cell. So this is how the immune system cells, especially the macrophages functions in clearing out all the, uh, the molecules from our body. Now 
let's take up how exactly the vaccines prevent the diseases so vaccines are basically they contains the small antigens or the part of the antigens which cause the disease so uh, for example the measles vaccines contains a measles virus but what happens is these these measles virus are either killed or they are attenuated by growing in a prolonged condition at a abnormal stages so these loses their uh, property of pathogenicity but what happens is when these proteins or these antigens are injected into the body they are recognized by the t and the b cells as foreign particles and immediately there is a immune response which comes into the picture so there are antibodies which are produced against these antigens so we can see over here a picture of a uh, a virus which is a measles virus in which there are various surface proteins which are called as the h protein or the f protein so these measles virus are either inactivated or killed by using various chemical components or heat treatment or they are live attenuated by growing them in a abnormal condition now from these viruses the surface protein antigens are taken up and there is a formulation which is pre, pre produced from these uh, these surface protein antigens and these are then injected into the body as the vaccines forms so as soon as they go into the blood circulations which contains the various b cells and the t cells they immediately recognize these antigens as the foreign particles and they start secreting the uh, act, get activated so now what happens is the t helper cells and the t cytotoxic cells get activated so the t helper cells start producing the cytokines so these cytokines go and activate the binding of the t uh, uh, b cells with the antigen so as soon as the cytokines are present these b cells are many a times called as the plasma cells on the surface of them they contains the antibodies which are very specific to these antigens now these antigen specific antibodies are released into the blood circulation or the lymphatic vessels and they then fight with these foreign particles or the foreign antigens which has invaded the body circulation and subsequently what happens is they try to take out these from the blood circulation with the help of the various mechanisms now another part comes into is the presence of the macrophages which engulfs these foreign particles and then they try them out so these antibodies are produced and these antibodies remains in the blood circulation for a longer period of time now whenever we have got a primary infection which comes into the body from this measles vaccines they are immediately recognized by these antibodies because they are preformed in the body and they immediately engulf these foreign particles and clear them out from the blood circulation or the lymphatic vessels now whenever there is a secondary immune uh, secondary infection which comes into the picture there are memory cells which are basically the b cells memory cells which are present they recognize them as the foreign and they are also taken out from the blood circulation now over here we can see a graph which is showing the concentration and the isotype of the serum antibody following a primary and a secondary immunization with the antigen now over here when a primary antigen is uh, uh, primary infection occurs what happens is the person is already immunized so what happens is there is a igm production which takes place or the antibody which are specific to these particular antigens are produced subsequently over a period of time the igg antibodies are produced and as the second infection occurs the igm concentration decreases but there is a large and expanded concentration volume of the igg which characterizes the secondary response characteristics so these these are basically the immunization um, with the help of the primary and the secondary immunization with the antigens now these primary and the secondary plays a very important role in the uh, designing of the immune response cells so this is a immunization with a single uh, dose of the stock polio vaccines which induces a rapid increase in the serum antibodies initially subsequently the serum antibody level decreases out but what remains is the immunologic memory cells which are present in this one so first is the branch of the immune system which is activated which is called as the humoral or cell mediated immune system and second 
branch is the development of the immunologic memory which remains in our body throughout the lifespan and whenever there is a secondary infection which occurs in the body they immediately recognize these secondary infections and they clear them or wipe them out from the immune system cells. So uh, with this note I come to the end of my lecture over here and in this part of the lecture I have discussed about the diseases, various diseases, how exactly the vaccines are being produced and then we came into the uh, various vaccines and how exactly these vaccines functions in the body mechanism by eliciting or uh, improving the immune response cells. Thank you very much. Dear friends, in this session of the lecture, we have discussed the timeline of the history of disease and vaccines as well as um, uh, how the vaccines work. And we take a break here. After the break, we will be resuming our lecture on vaccines. Thank you for watching. Hello friends and welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, in the lecture on vaccines, in this part of the lecture we will be discussing active and passive immunization as well as different types of vaccines. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subjects by Dr. Amit Bhattacharya. And let's welcome Dr. Bhattacharya and ask him to resume the lecture. Welcome Thank you sir. Very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, dear students, in this part of the lecture, I will talk about the active and the passive immunization, how our body is pr protected from the passive immunized things and how exactly these vaccines help us the protection from the various diseases. Then I will go into the various major types of the vaccines. Now, before going into that one, we have to discuss about the active and the passive immunization. So, immunity to the various infectious microorganisms can be achieved either by the active or passive immunization. Now, the active immunization basically involves the injection of the antibodies or the vaccines, while the passive immunization is usually the transfer from which takes place from the mothers to the fetus or the previous infections which have occurred to a person or a, by an organism. Now, uh, 
the uh, passive immunity majorly is acquired through natural maternal antibodies then there are immunoglobulins humanized uh, monoclonal antibody antitoxin now the active immunity is basically the natural infections the various ax, uh, vaccines which includes the attenuated organisms inactivated organisms purified organisms then there are cloned antigens and multivalent complexes and toxoids so we'll discuss about few of them in this presentation over here now the passive immunization basically involves the transfer of the preformed antibody so it majorly occurs uh, with the help of the maternal antibodies so uh, uh, it occurs naturally by the transfer of the maternal antibodies across the placenta to the developing fetus so the maternal antibodies are basically to various uh, major infectious diseases such as the diphtheria tetanus streptococci rubella uh, mumps and the polio so it provides a infection or protection to the developing fetus from all these infection now these maternal antibodies are basically present in the colostrum and the milk uh, which provides the passive immunity to the infant also now the passive immunization can be also achieved by injecting a recipient with the preformed antibodies in this case we have the injection of the horse anti serum which neutralizes any uh, tetanus toxins produced by the clostridium tetani in the wounds now the uh, various passive immunization which can be treated with the help of the inf uh, injections are the disease such as the black uh, widow uh, spider bite which which can be treated with the uh, antibodies which have been originated from the horse anti venom then the botulism diphtheria hepatitis a b measles rabies respiratory diseases snake bite tetanus so all these are the various diseases for which the passive immunization can be given up now over here i have shown an example how exactly the anti venom production is taking place which is a part of the passive immunization so uh, the venoms are collected in the sir uh, serpentum Uh, over here so we can see from the snake the venoms are uh, the collected subsequently uh, these venoms are injected in the uh, in the horse so it is called as the hyper immune plasma is collected so in the horse these venoms are injected so as soon as they are injected into the blood circulation of the horse they are regarded as the foreign particles and the antibody pr uh, production takes place against these venom uh these venoms now these anti venom antibodies are then collected and they are purified and the product controls are done and subsequently they are uh, uh, the after the antibodies which have been collected they are packaged in the form of uh, the anti venom so we can see over here it is a anti venom for the snee snake which have been produced in the horse so these are the this is the basic technique how exactly the commercially anti venom production is used for the treatment of venomous snake bites in the various organism now we come into the active immunization which elicit a longer term protection so this passive immunization generally helps us helps the uh, the fetus or the infant or the uh, organisms humans for a transient time but the active immunization gives them a protection for a longer period of time so when the active immunization is successful uh, there is a subsequent uh, exposure to the pathogenic agent which elicit a higher immune uh, response which that successfully eliminates the pathogen and the prevents disease now the active immunization mainly consists of the vaccines development and the vaccines strategy so in the active immunization the immune systems plays an active role where there is a proliferation of antigen active b cells and the t cells which results in the formation of the memory cells so because of the presence of these b memory cells they have got a long term protection from that particular diseases now uh the vaccinations in the child begin at the age of about 2 months of the age and there are different vaccines which are given at the various phases of their uh, growth now the hepatitis b vaccines is given then the uh, dpt vaccines which is diphtheria pertussis vaccines is given then the polio vaccine which is inactivated salk and oral sabin vaccines are there then there are mmr vax combined vaccines which is measles mumps and rubella then there is hemophilus vaccines which are given 
then there are pneumococcal conjugated vaccines. So there are different vaccines which are given and there is a chart which is there in which it shows that what exactly vaccine should be given to a developing uh, child. Now, if we see the uh, vaccines work in India, so the smallpox which originated in the, uh, the, in the year uh, 1975, before the vaccines, there were about 23,546 deaths which occurred because of smallpox. And after the vaccines which came up in the year uh, 1976, it was 100% eradicated. So we can see the effect, how, exact, how uh, effective these vaccines are. Then in the year 1980s, which is before the vaccine came into the picture, the polio vaccine, there were about 18,976 deaths. But in the year 2011-12, there has been report that not a single case of polio virus have been detected in India. So there has been complete wiped out from the polio virus infection. Now, we see the case of the tetanus, then comes the diphtheria, in which in 1980s, there were about 39,000 cases which were reported but by the end of 2012 there were 2525 cases so it was drastically reduced by 94 percent then comes the uh, pertussis where there were 320000 cases which were reported in 1980s in the year 2012 there were about only 44164 cases which were reported so there was a drastic reduction of 86 percent cases then comes the measles where there were about 1,14,000 cases which were reported in the year 1980 before the vaccines came into the picture and after the vaccines uh, program it was reduced to about 18,668. So we can just see how exactly these vaccines and how effective these vaccines are working in the Indian scenario. Now, if we go into the vaccine trials, how exactly these vaccines are developed, they are developed in the various trial phases. So, one of the promising vaccine candidates first goes into the phase 1 trial. Subsequently, from the phase 1 trials, it goes into the phase 2 trial, then phase 3 trial. Then the licensing of that particular vaccine comes into the picture if it is very efficient and uh, it is functioning well within all the parameters. Then it is introduced into the public health practice in various developing countries and subsequently there are various studies which are taken place, how effective that vaccine is, what are the safety and protection which the vaccines are giving up. So that's, that's actually the post-marketing phase trials which comes into the picture. So the vaccine trials is a pretty long way part which have to be scaled upon and then only the vaccines come into the market. Now, we come into the few of the most important uh, uh, major types of the vaccines which are there, which are called as the life attenuated vaccines, then chimeric live attenuated vaccines, inactivated vaccines, subunit vaccines, nucleic acid based vaccines over here. So, we will discuss them one by one. Now, uh, what is the difference between the whole killed vaccines which includes the inactivated killed vaccines or the live attenuated vaccines. Basically, the inactivated vaccines or the killed vaccines are basically the pathogens or the disease causing organisms which have been killed by heat or by various chemical means. So, they are no longer capable of replicating within the host while the live attenuated uh, vaccines are basically the, uh, they have been attenuated to achieve by growing them in abnormal conditions for a prolonged period of time. So, they have lost their pathogenicity property by these abnormal growth pictures. So, we can see both these uh, the whole organism vaccines over here. One is the whole inactivated while the other one is the live attenuated. Now, what is the various differences between the inactivated and the attenuated vaccines? So, if we see the cost picture, the inactivated vaccines are much higher than the attenuated va vaccines, while the administrations are mainly parental, while in the attenuated it is oral, while uh, the adjuvants are needed in the inactivated vaccines, while it is not needed for the attenuated form. The stability is pretty good in the case of the inactivated vaccines, while they have got a poor stability in the attenuated because there are chances that the uh, live attenuated form may revert or convert back into the virulent forms because they have been grown in abnormal conditions. So only the genes for their pathogenicity have been changed but over a period of time they may come back 
to their virulent form also so reversion is absent in the case of the inactivated form which are either done by heat killing or by various chemical mechanisms while in the case of the attenuated the, there is a possibility of coming back uh, for them to be in the reversed form then the immunity if we check the mucosal uh, immunity is absent in the case of the inactivated while the attenuated form are much more effective in eliciting the immune response so there is a mucosal immunity which is present now the antibody mediate and the cytotoxic T cells are present so the immunity in the case of the inactivated is short lasting while in the case of the attenuated it is long lasting now if you see the first one which is the live attenuated a virulent form so there is a capacity for the transient growth or the replicate within the injected host so prolonged immune system exposure to the individual epitomes on the uh, attenuated organism it results in increased immunosity and production of the uh, memory cells it requires only a single immunization dose while it induces the cell mediated and humoral response the examples of the live attenuated a virulent forms are sabin polio vaccine bcg vaccines now one of the major disadvantage of these kind of uh, attenuated vaccines is there is possibility that they will revert back to a virulent form which occurs in many of the cases now let's come into some of the live attenuated uh, forms of the vaccines the whole organisms like in the bacterial diseases the various vaccines which are live attenuated are present are for tuberculosis it is bcg then for the typhoid it is the also a live attenuated vaccine for viruses it is measles mumps polio rotavirus yellow fever so there are vaccines which are available for all these diseases which are basically the live attenuated forms now we come into the first vaccine development which is against the tuberculosis so tuberculosis is basically we all of us know it is a primary uh, airborne communicable disease which is caused by a bacterium which is called as the mycobacterium tuberculosis so this uh, this vaccines was developed by dr albert calmet and uh, camille gioren so the bcg vaccines was a uh, percutaneous use vaccine which was developed it is a attenuated vaccine uh, which was developed in a abnormal conditions for a prolonged period of time it was grown in a medium which contains a increasing concentration of the bile so these bacteria when they were uh, grown in these increased concentration of bile for a prolonged period of time they lost the property of the pathogenicity and they became a virulent so these a virulent form of these bacterium were collected and subsequently they were packaged in the form of the vaccines and this vaccine is called as the bcg vaccines which means bcg means the bacillus of calmet and the gurin name after the scientist who created this particular vaccine now the next vaccine which comes into the picture is for the typhoid vaccine so the typhoid vaccine live oral which is called as the ty21a so the typhoid is basically caused by agent which is called as the salmonella typhoid so it is a, a acute febrile enteric disease um, now the vaccines which have been developed over here is a live attenuated form of the vaccines so it is called as the uh, vivotif which is typhoid vaccine live oral vaccine it is a live attenuated vaccine for oral administration only so there are capsules which are present which contains not fewer than 2 raised to the power, into 10 raised to the power 9 viable organism so we can see the capsules over here which are recommended to the person who is suffering from the typhoid fever and these contains contains the live attenuated form of the salmonella typhi and when they are consumed they uh, they develop the immune response to this particular uh, uh, salmonella typhi or pathogens now next come on one of the most important uh, discovery which took place was the development of the polio vaccine so the polio vaccines uh, uh, infection agent was a virus which first discovered in the year 1908 uh, by the scientist carl landsteiner and alvin popper so they announced that the infection agent in the polio was a virus subsequently they deduced that the viral nature of polio Uh, uh, by carefully filtering out the preparation from a 
spinal cord preparation from a person who has died from the polio. So from the spinal cord, the spinal cord fluid was taken up and they watched under the microscope and they can found out these peculiar find uh, viruses. So a, a diagrammatic representation of these viruses are drawn in this picture. Now the filters are known to trap the diseases when popper and lanstener injected these filtered uh, preparations into the monkey. Monkey also developed these polio uh, diseases. Now subsequently in the year uh, uh, between the year 1961 to the 1963 Albert uh, Sabin developed the first oral po polio vaccines. So he, he was convinced that these polio viruses they lived in the, uh, the primary in the intestines. Now Dr. Uh, Sabin focused on isolating a mutant form of the polio virus incapable of producing the disease thereafter uh, safe for introduction into human things. So this avirulent virus would reproduce uh, rapidly in the intestine and provide the person a protection against these particular things by, by developing or eliciting the immune response cells. Now how exactly these uh, polio uh, vaccines, oral polio vaccines were developed? So the Sabin polio vaccines consist of three attenuated strains of polio virus which are administered orally to the children with the help of the sugar liquid. So these uh, attenuated viruses colonizes the intestine and they, they provide or induce a protective immunity to all these three strains of the virulent polio viruses. So these three strains were developed in by three different uh, uh, protocols methods which are shown in this picture. Now if we see the progression, uh, the worldwide uh, progression of the eradication of the polio, we can see this is a picture which is uh, from the year uh, 1998. So most of the cases were reported from the, uh, the Asian regions mainly from the India and many of the parts of the African parts also got uh, affected by this particular thing. Now the different three strains of the polio uh, vaccines were developed in three strains of the uh, monkey. So uh, in each of them we can see the monkey kidney cells were taken up in which this viruses were grown over a period of time and they were passaged over there and subsequently they were grown on the petri dishes and from those ones the Sabin type 1, type 2 and type 3 kind of uh, the strains were isolated and detected. So this is how the three strains of the polio vaccines were developed and that's why there are three doses of polio uh, vaccines which are given to a child because there are three strains or the types of uh, uh, viruses which are present for the polio. Now if we see uh, in India there is a uh, there was a huge campaign to eradicate the polio uh, viruses um, uh, throughout the country. So there were lots of uh, medical agencies which came into the picture mainly the Rotary and the other uh, international organizations for a complete eradication of the polio vaccine. So there were medical practitioners, volunteers, medical doctors who came into the... So these oral polio vaccines were given across the parts of the India so for a complete eradication of the polio viruses. So uh, we can see the pictures where the volunteers are accompanying uh, with the uh, ice bags to the various places like the bus stations, uh, railway stations where they are giving the vaccines to the child for a complete eradication program under the UNICEF and WHO UNESCO program. Now in the year January 2014 India was declared as polio free nation. Not a single case of polio has been detected over the years. So uh, in the year uh, the uh, January 2014, the Rotary along with the various WHO and government organizations celebrated the end polio day in India. So we can see some of the pictures which are shown over here. So uh, this is another one of the picture which uh, got highlighted in the newspapers where the uh, world has been shown that the India is now polio free because most of the largest number of the cases of polio were reported from the Indian subcontinent only. So uh, the, these are the various uh, things which came into the picture. So uh, uh, 
then an another picture is shown over here so uh, these polio uh, eradication program played a very important role for the subsequent eradication program so now the government of india has taken place another eradication program which is called as the mission indra dhanush under which the child is being categorized over the period of growth ages what exactly vaccines have to be given up so all the medical centers and the medical facilities have been uh, taken care of with all the vaccines which should be given to these child so that any diseases outbreak cannot happen in india so this is called as the uh, eradication program so uh, with this note i come to the end of my lecture thank you very much uh, sir just to um, have some queries uh, yeah. uh, what what significance of vaccines do you see in terms of uh, immunization development over a period of time okay so uh, as we uh, saw in one of these slides the immunization program is very important because we have seen that most of the vaccines which have been developed over a period of time they they have completely eradicated that particular disease from uh, the parts of the world so uh, we can see initially there were lots of cases for polio measles mumps but after the vaccines which came into the picture either they have been reduced drastically or they have been completely eradicated from that particular part of the world which which has got a endemic uh, property for that particular disease so we are hoping that there are lots of other diseases like the hiv tuberculosis and and there are uh, malaria which is there then the cancer is one of the major diseases like this one there may be some vaccines which may come up in the near future and subsequently they can also eradicate these diseases from that particular area from where the largest number of cases are reported sir as in the case of uh, antibiotic resistance do vaccine also develop their own kind of resistance no not really ma'am because the vaccines are basically functions in a very different strategy uh, hmm. of the thing the, the vaccines are generally given for a protection strategies because they help us to protect from that particular diseases while the drugs like the antibacterial antifungal antiviral drugs are given when the person have been already infected with that particular virus bacteria or that particular infectious agent so vaccines are basically given to a person so that he or she develops a long term immune response to that particular infection if that infection fails like there are lots of viral diseases in which the infection fails up then there are drugs which are available which can counter attack those particular thing over a period of time so both of them are having a very different strategies but many a times they act in a synergistic way to eradicate that particular thing from the body circulation but more or less vaccines are much better then the uh, then because they elicit a immune response cells and they have got a immune memory response so what happens is if suppose we have got a uh, polio infection we have already got a polio vaccines with us so there won't be any infections and if it occurs if it comes into our body the antibodies or the immune response cells are already present in our body so they will immediately recognize them and clear them or wipe them out from the body circulation so we will be completely protective for that one so the vaccines give us a complete protection because they use our own mechanisms mm. to counter attack those particular viruses antigens antibodies over there Okay dear friends on that note we would like to thank Dr Bhattacharya for coming here and delivering this wonderful lecture thank you. and thank you dear friends for watching our lecture on that note we'll we'll take a leave thank you very much <laughs>